A B C D E F G. From kindergarten to grade five, here's three terrifying stories that didn't just happen to kids, but around the area of an elementary school. Grab a blanket, turn off your lights, and let's get ready for the first day of school with these three horror stories. How my elementary school friends saved my life. Back in elementary school, I always walked home from school. It was a 10-minute walk to my house, and I didn't have to spend 30 minutes on a bus. I was a shy kid and had some friends I always played with. We played with pogs and fought over who was the Green Ranger. Well, there was this one kid in third grade I can't remember, but I think he was new, just transferred. He didn't talk or have any friends, dressed in a jean jacket every day, and was tough looking for a third grader. I had never talked to this kid ever, and one day he walks up to me on the playground alone and says, "I'm going to kill you today." I laughed and was like, "Okay." Well, my friend had heard it, and she said, "Aren't you going to tell the teacher?" I said, "No, he's not going to do anything. He's just being mean." Well, I left from school that day. I went home and went to bed. Next day, I'm called into the principal's office, and my mom and dad are there. The principal explained to my parents what the kid had said, and said they were expelling him thanks to my friend, and they stopped the bully. Well, I went on with life and never saw him again, and went into high school. I went through some depression, and my mother told me to value my life because I'm lucky to be alive. I asked her why. She then explained the whole story. She said, "Remember how my friend had told the teacher right before school let out? They caught the kid as soon as he was about to leave. They searched his backpack and found a combat knife. And they called my parents and told them everything, while agreeing to not fill me in on everything so they wouldn't scare me. So back in third grade, I almost died from a crazy kid." I was shocked, and ever since, I still don't know what happened to that kid. Elementary school creeper. So a few years ago, I was in my early teens. It was the summer of eighth grade, going into ninth grade. I lived within walking distance of the elementary school, which had a good park and was a typical hangout spot. The train tracks ran through the property, but not too close to the school to endanger anyone. And another school border was a small acre or two of woods. Older kids and teens would hang out in the woods, hiding, smoking cigarettes, and drinking beers. It was not unlike any kid from a group of my friends to be seen in these woods. My best friends A and I, who were mutuals with the kids who would hang around the woods, went to the school on a summer afternoon to swing on the swings, and gossip and talk about boys and whatever we used to do, at an elementary school park. Now I have bad eyes, nearsighted as anything. This will matter. As my friend and I were sitting in the field and swinging, we noticed there was A way too quiet and there was no kids around. Which wasn't typical of the park and B. There were weird vibes coming from the woods, as well as a car parked with a Florida license plate on it. Since we live in Pennsylvania, we continue to do our thing, and we hear a guy's voice coming from the woods, saying something along the lines of, "Hey," and "Girls." I thought it was a friend of ours, since I cannot see well. So A and I walk slightly closer to the woods. Again, thinking it was a friend, and seeing a guy doing something near his waist. Since I'm blind and A doesn't have much better vision than me, I still thought it was a friend who just urinated or something and was fixing his belt. Boy, could I have been more wrong? At that exact moment, I realized that that friend I was thinking of was on vacation and wasn't due back for another five days. And with one more step closer, I saw a middle-aged man. Still couldn't make out what he was doing. Was he getting out a gun to kill me, or jerking off? 
At that point, he started asking if he could eat our pussy and if we would let him rape us. Yes, he asked if he could rape us. We were 13 or 14 years old. I realized he must have been watching us for the hour or more that we were, we were there and had been stroking it the whole time at an elementary school. I immediately called the cops upon running away, and since I'm in a small town, they were there almost immediately. We got into the car and told him the brief description and what he said and what he was doing, while other police officers and the K-9 unit searched the woods. After three hours of being questioned of the same story over and over again, and waiting at the station for our parents to be released, they found him. He immediately pleaded guilty, he said how sexy we were, and how he wanted us to the police. Still can't get that through my head, and begged for his wife to not be told. Turns out, he was a college security guard, and a retired military personnel with a wife and two children. Since he was exposing himself at an elementary school, he was put on the Megan's Law and could not see his kids without a guard for a long time. He served a few years in jail for what he did. It was surreal and bizarre to have that happen at a place where I grew up. I'm just glad it was me and not some smaller child who could have been raped or whatever he was planning to do if he got a hold of us. The Elementary School Janitor Story This is a story I'm not supposed to be telling, a family secret that I'm not supposed to know about. When my grandfather was younger, he became the principal of an elementary school. He was in his late 20s and early 30s at the time, and despite being young, he was a born leader. He was a great principal and everyone loved him. I can attest to that as I attended multiple award ceremonies for him, and the respect and admiration he received was crazy. There was a young boy at the school who was having behavioral issues in class, and my grandfather saw that the kid just didn't have a lot of parental support. So he called in his father and had a talk with him about spending more time with his son and just a general parenting session. It turned out that all the boy needed was his dad's attention and after a few weeks, he was a happy model student. Whenever my grandfather would leave school late, he would see the dad was playing basketball with his son after he got home from work. It was one of those moments that he took pride in, being able to make a difference in people's lives. However, not everything had such an easy solution, and my grandfather found himself having to deal with an employee, Stanley the janitor, who was showing up to work drunk Stanley was an alcoholic with a mean streak, and my grandfather tried on multiple occasions to deal with his behavior. Finally, one day Stanley showed up so drunk that my grandfather sent him home and called the superintendent to let him know that he was going to fire him the next morning after he sobered up. He then warned them to let him deal with it when Stanley was sober, because he was not a stable person. As it goes in these kinds of stories, the superintendent was furious and decided that he was going to call Stanley himself and fire him despite my grandfather's warning. No one called my grandfather to tell him about it either, so he was completely in the dark and thought he could deal with it in the morning. Stanley was furious and went to the school that evening. He searched the offices, my grandfather's included, and tore things apart until he finally had what he wanted. He was in a blaze of fury and on his way out, he saw the father and his son playing basketball. He walked towards them and pulled something out of his trousers. It was a gun. He then proceeded to shoot the little boy, killing him instantly. The father was so upset, was hysterically crying out, somehow managed to get the gun away from Stanley and shoot him. My grandfather was called to the elementary school immediately by the police because there were two dead bodies. The little boy and Stanley were dead. But what was even worse was the crying from the father and him saying that he couldn't save his son. It was clear that he would never forgive himself for that day. My grandfather was pulled aside by one of the police who had searched Stanley for evidence. They'd found a list 
a hit list of the people he was going to kill and all the addresses of those people that he had retrieved when he searched the offices. My grandfather was number one on that list. So, if it weren't for that father, it's likely that I've never been able to meet my grandfather, and possibly my mother and grandmother would have been killed if Stanley had been able to complete his mission. To this day, I get goosebumps whenever I hear that story and it's just so chilling. My grandfather never uttered a single word about this after his initial recount, and my mother made me swear to never tell him I knew. He carried the weight of that boy's death on him until the day he died. So Stanley, I'm glad we never had to meet, and you were stopped before you could cause more harm.